Social Security's role as it relates to the emergency fund, COVID-19 emergency fund, is to update the public today as to the next step. In our previous press release, we would have noted the qualifying conditions. Those can be found at socialsecurity.kn. In addition, today we inform that the application process is now active. And as we are conscious of minimizing movement, the application process is now available online at www.socialsecurity.kn. The form must be completed by the employee or the self-employed person and sent to the Department of Labor's email address, dolcovid19 at gmail.com. dolcovid19 at gmail.com. At this point, we inform also that employers are required to send a list of names to the Department of Labor at the address previously given. It is important to note that government workers and the persons associated with statutory bodies and step, there is no need to make an application. The wages of those persons are not affected in any way. Should you have any question related to your eligibility, call the numbers 662-2075 or 667-2535. This information again will be reiterated and posted to our Social Security's Facebook page and the Social Security website at socialsecurity.kn. The police have had another good night, the security forces rather, have had a good, another good night of public cooperation and respect for the curfew. Last night, only two persons were arrested, one in Nevis and one in Sinkitz. To date, we have arrested 23 persons for violation of the, the curfew. April 3rd and 4th has been designated as partial curfew days. This means that citizens are permitted to be outdoors between the hours of 6 a.m. and 5 p.m. to access essential services. These include groceries, medical supplies and services, gas stations, banking services, port services, etc. The new emergency regulations have suspended all retail liquor licenses under the Liquor License Act. And there seems to have been some confusion over this as to whether or not this applies to supermarkets. No, it does not. It only applies to bars and shops that sell liquor by retail. So supermarkets can continue to sell their liquor wholesale or by the bottle. The intention of this, of course, as, as I mentioned, was to discourage the type of socializing that persons would have at a bar in, environment or in a shop, or even at the side of the road. Persons with vehicles ending with three, please note that the period for the licensing of your vehicles has been extended until April 15th. However, those of you who have already inspected your vehicles uh, you can have your vehicle licensed online via the Inland Revenue Department's website at www.sknird.com. To date, uh, we have received via 311 22 calls for the past 24 hours, 19 on St. Kitts, 3 on Nevis. The National Emergency Operations Center has received six calls. Three calls were for persons seeking general information. Three calls were related to social distancing regarding overcrowding in buses, persons at the beach, and the overcrowding situation at the supermarkets. I was also informed that the distribution of the COVID-19 care packages to the vulnerable, this includes the elderly, mentally challenged, and disabled, was completed today, Saturday. I'm appealing to the general public to adhere to the curfew laws and let us make the job of the security forces much easier as they babysit us day and night to ensure that we don't 
contribute to the transmission of the virus. Remember, the virus does not move. People move the virus. This is the reason why we have to implement some measures to ensure that we don't become another country that will see that exponential growth of victims to this virus. To date, we have done 149 tests with 10 confirmed positives, seven in St. Kitts and three on Nevis now, 114 confirmed negatives and 25 results are pending. There are 34 persons in quarantine in a government facility, while 268 persons are being quarantined at home. 10 persons, obviously the 10 confirmed cases, are all in isolation as per the requirements of the World Health Organization for confirmed cases. And of course, 146 persons would have been released from quarantine to date. We're reminding individuals again, if you're going out to shop, make sure that you're going out to shop for something that is essential. Yesterday, I had the chance to witness some of it myself, and I am amazed, given the fact that St. Kitts and Nevis has such a high incidence of non-communicable diseases, that a number of young people are in the line shopping for things like potato chips, two liter bottles of Coca-Cola, all kinds of other dried fruits um, and foods that are corn-based or fried-based or anything like that, beer and other things. Now, I don't consider any of those items to be essential. And from where we sit in the Ministry of Health, at a time of crisis such as the one that we are experiencing, we are urging people when you go to shop, make sure you have a list and you buy the essentials, the things that you need to eat, things that are nutritious, things that are going to boost your own immune system, not things that are salty, fatty, or sugary that will cre create a debilitating effect for you and in the end make you more susceptible to the symptoms of COVID if you're so unfortunate to become a COVID confirmed case. So please, we are appealing to you to follow the advice. If you do not need to go home, out, stay home. These regulations and what we have put in place, they're a fluid instrument. It is something that will be constantly revised. But from what we are seeing, we need to improve on the model because we cannot continue this way. If we do this, we'll be making three steps forward and six backward. So it is something that is currently under review by the cabinet and by the Ministry of Health, as well as the COVID-19 task force who would be advising the cabinet in this particular measure. Now, before I close, I should also indicate at this time that we have had a steady flow of philanthropic donations. There would have been a release yesterday that was issued by SKNIS, which would have outlined about three significant donations. And today, I would like to add to that list by stating the following, that we would have received three additional donations, one from the St. Kitts Biomedical Research Foundation, made by Dr. Andy Redmond and Mr. Alexis Nisbet, and it has to do with a, a cassette that can take care of 250 samples of an antibody-based rapid test. In other words, the test is designed to look to check to see if you have been exposed to COVID-19, to what extent you were exposed, because it should be picking up the amount of antibodies in your system. So that is very helpful. These tests are not cheap. And as I said, it's, uh, it has the ability to take 250 samples, and for that we are eternally grateful. Then I also must announce that we would have received a donation in the amount of US $20,000 to cover the cost of an additional ventilator to be placed at the Jane France General Hospital in the ICU. And this was made by Mrs. Yin Jin of Galaxy Caribbean Real Estate. Those are the owners and operators of the Ramada project. So for that, we are also very grateful. And the third donation is a donation coming from the Rotary Club of St. Kitts, and it's in the amount of $10,500 to cover the cost of 50 tests to be done at the Next Generation Laboratory. And these funds are to be used strictly for persons who cannot afford the cost of their test. So between yesterday and today, we would have had two donations Earmark for persons who can ill afford the cost of the test at Next Generation Lab. The prior announcement would have um, stated that we would have received a check for $21,000 from Charles Wilkin to cover 100 tests, 
I was corrected this morning that donation is a joint donation from Mr. Charles Wilkin and Mr. Ken Kelly. So we congratulate both of these individuals for that. We are also informing the public that the Ministry of Health would welcome donations from private citizens as well as the corporate sector. However, if you are uncertain in terms of what you would wish to contribute, please make contact with us so that we can give you an idea of the things that we have on our list that you can't have too many of, so that we can be in a better position to explain what is possible in terms of a more meaningful contribution. On that note, I, it would be remiss of me if I do not use this opportunity to also indicate that we would have received on the 26th of March a small donation by Dr. Terence Drew in the amount of 19 test strips. Unfortunately, the Ministry of Health cannot act on that donation because these test strips are written in Mandarin Chinese. The box is also in Chinese. We have no way of verifying the efficacy of the test that can be done. So for the time being, we have basically shelved the donation, but we acknowledge it nevertheless and say thank you. The Ministry of Health would also wish to announce at this point that on Wednesday, we would have received nine of the ventilators that we had on order. Those are now in country to be placed on the private ward of JNF. Two days prior to that, we would have received a gift from a private business person in Taiwan in the amount of three um, ventilators. Two of those ventilators were for St. Kitts, for JNF, and one for Nevis. So as a result of that, Nevis would have received their two ventilators yesterday, the one from the Taiwan business person and one out of the stock that would have, would have been ordered by the Federal Ministry of Health.